Hi, my name is Jose Perez III. I'm the lead game designer on Capcom and Airtight Games Dark Void. So at Airtight Games, one of the things that we've always really wanted to do is we've wanted to take a kind of ground-based combat that you find in a lot of different games from uh, Gears of War to Halo. And we've always wanted to combine that with uh, aerial combat. And we want to do that in a way that's really interesting and, and never been done before. So we, we thought about a lot of different ways we could do that. And we went from the straight, like you could jump out of your plane and parachute uh, down to the ground um, stuff. And we played with that for a while and it, it was pretty fun, but there was still always this, this weird thing where you'd be out in the middle of nowhere, you'd jump out of your plane, or your, your UFO as it is in this game, and, and you kind of land on the ground and all of a sudden you, you're stuck way out in the middle of nowhere and how do you get around? Uh, one of our designers, uh, Pedro Perez, actually had this idea of the rocket pack. For a long time, I was thinking of the rocket pack kind of more like a lunar lander thing, if you guys have played that, where you just kind of can go up and down. Or, or like that game that came out a long time ago, Destroy All Humans. But uh, Pedro really grabbed this, gravitated towards this idea of what if we took all of the mechanics that we had um, for our, our UFOs in that flight, and we applied it to the player. And to his credit, it became one of the defining features of our game. Now that Will is flying around, he really, uh, his objective right now at this moment is how do I take down the rest of these UFOs? From this point, you could uh, go back into a hover state, so you do have the ability to kind of hover around, and you could try to pick at him with any guns that you have in your arsenal, from a machine gun to a rocket launcher or whatever. Um, but because he hasn't upgraded his pack to a point to where he can shoot these UFOs yet, in order to take these guys down, he needs to actually hijack one of these vehicles and use it against them. So with a simple press of a button, you land on the UFO. Uh, this isn't a quick time event or anything. You're still in control of your character, so left or right will move you around the UFO. And uh, you need to trick this center gun and find a way to rip off this back paneling, which messes up some of the circuitry and opens up that hatch in the middle. From this point, you jump in, uh, you've got a little struggle to steal the watcher's gun. Uh, you shoot him in his head, and now the UFO is actually yours. And from here, we get back to um, to our heritage again, uh, to a, a game that we all worked on called Crimson Skies. So we're taking a lot of that knowledge, and we're applying it here. So if you've played Crimson Skies before, you really know how this stuff works. You've got uh, a bunch of different special moves that you can do in it, um, and you really, you know, a, a great sense of flight. Uh, it's, it's definitely difficult to build these really big worlds for flight spaces and then have the on-ground stuff. But we think that our art team and, uh, and our, our programming team has really done a good job of maintaining the quality level, whether you're in the air doing this vehicular combat or you're on the ground doing a, more of that cover-based uh, third-person shooter combat. We will have a couple different vehicles uh, that you'll get to play in over the course of the game. I don't get to show any of those to you yet, you'll have to wait a little bit. Uh, we do have some time before the game comes out, so over the next couple of months we'll be revealing more and more about uh, vehicles and weapons and, and who the Watchers really are. At any point during the game, uh, if your UFO starts to take a lot of damage, you can simply bail out of it kick back on your rocket pack and grab another UFO. So we don't have repair stations or anything like that. You really just have to be nimble and say, do I really want to push this to the limit and see how long I can stay in this UFO? Or do I want to jump out and grab another one that's uh, a little more fresh? So that was a quick look at uh, some of the flight stuff that we have in Dark Void. There's going to be a lot of new information coming for you guys later, so stay tuned.